I'm Senior Vice President for Power and Environmental Policies for Alstom, which is the number one equipment maker for hydro power in the world. I've enjoyed my time at the Congress, although it's been too short, partly because it's been a pleasure to be with so many people who have expertise in these topics. My particular interest is in dealing with energy and climate change and how you develop policies which most effectively deliver energy security and which help to tackle climate change and do so at an affordable cost. And in that capacity, I've been very pleased to see that hydro is alive and well and that the IHA is actually doing a lot of work on the issues which confront hydropower today. I've been particularly struck at the work that's been done on how to make hydro more sustainable for the future. We know there are concerns and issues, but that doesn't mean that they can't be addressed. And of course, every energy source has issues which need to be tackled. So hydro is not unique in that regard. Hydro is unique in that as well as making its own contribution to the power system, it can also help other sources either uh, contribute at all. For example, you need something like the flexibility of hydro and the availability of pump storage if you're going to have a large penetration of wind power on your grid. As well as that though, hydro is also good because it can help reduce the costs of thermal plant which otherwise bears quite big increased costs coping with the onset of intermittent generation. So if hydro is able to come up and, and down and, and meet the demand on the system, that means that the thermal plant can operate at its optimum efficiency rather than having to operate at lesser efficiency. Or it can operate as baseload instead of peaking plant and be cheaper. So if you take a more integrated approach to the power system, it's clear that hydropower has a huge contribution to make above and beyond actually being itself a low-cost, carbon-free, flexible source of power.